Welcome back everybody. My name is Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking. In this series, we are rebuilding the user interfaces of popular apps in SwiftUI. Previously in this playlist, we have rebuilt Spotify. Currently, we are rebuilding Bumble. And this is the fifth video in the Bumble section. So if you missed the first four, check those out first. They lead up to this one. They're available for free on this channel, on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you have not. And in this fifth video, we're gonna finish up our chat screen. Uh, again, I'm gonna challenge you guys to build some of it ahead of me. But overall, we're gonna take a high level approach here of everything that we have built inside this Bumble app. I hope you guys are enjoying this playlist as much as I have been enjoying building these screens. Without further ado, let's jump into Xcode and write some code. We are back. What's up, world? In the last video, we created two cells. We created this cell and we created this cell, but we haven't really implemented it yet. So in this video, we're going to make this full screen, putting together everything that we have just built. And then we're going to do a little bit of routing at the end. So we got some scroll views here and let's get going. Firstly, let's jump into our core. Let's right click and create a new file. It'll be a Swift UI view and we'll call this one the Bumble Chats view. Click create. In here, we're going to add a quick background, Z stack color dot bumble white, ignore the safe area. And let's start building. I'm going to move this over so that we can see what we're building here. First and foremost, we're going to need a bunch of users for each of these chats. I'm not going to take the time to actually make mock data for all the mock chats, but we're going to add all the users that we can fetch and then just put in some fake profile images. So we've done this before in this playlist. Let's jump back to our Bumble home view where we have all users. Let's just copy that, put it up here. And also on the Bumble home view, we had a function called get data. I'm just gonna copy that, put that in here as well. Obviously, if this was your actual app, you'd have some custom logic for what we are adding here. But for now, let's add a task and we'll say await get data. Let's also just add the Toolbar visibility is hidden for the nav bar. Now we got our array of users. Let's start building out our header here. Very simple header on this screen. So I'm going to add a H stack. Let's give it spacing of a zero. Open the brackets. On the left is going to be an image with a system name of line.horizontal.3. And on the right is going to be another image with a system name of magnifying glass. Let's give both of these a font of title and a font weight of medium. And let's push them apart with a spacer, the min length of zero. Bang. Beautiful. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to cut this, move it down here. Private var header of type some view, paste that in, put the header on the screen and let's give the header maybe a padding. Let's go 16 for now. Awesome. What I'm going to do is put this inside a V stack. That V stack, let's just remove the spacing and then just put a spacer at the bottom just to push it up. So our headers are going to be looking like that. Next, we're going to do this top scroll view here. It's going to have the match queue. So firstly, let's go here with a V stack. We can see that it's going to be the left edge that these are going to be aligned to. Let's go spacing of eight and open the brackets here. At the top, let's put the match queue with the number here. So that's going to be an H stack. Open the brackets. First, we'll have a text that says match queue, Q U E U E. Then we're going to concatenate with another text that says the array of all users. Let's go here and we'll say all users, all users dot count. Match Q is 30. Let's put parentheses there like this outside. So we actually render the parentheses. Let's make this second text have a foreground style of dot bumble gray. So it's a little bit different color. And this is not actually an H stack. Let's just make this a group because it's just one object now because we use the plus sign here. Let's, Let's give the full V stack a frame with a max width of infinity and an alignment of leading. So it's all the way on the left edge here. And then let's add our scroll view. So we have this scroll view we're going to add now. Let's go 
the scroll view. Let's go with the axis of horizontal and then a lazy H stack. I'm using lazy so that if we have a ton of users, we're not rendering them all at once. So let's go lazy H stack here, open the brackets. Space in between these, maybe 16. And for each, we're gonna go for each, all users, user in. Let's put on the screen a Bumble profile image cell. Triple click, control M. This will be the user dot image, user. This percentage remaining, we actually don't have. Let's just go double dot random zero to one for now. And then finally, let's just go bool dot random as well. Awesome. Looks like we have these on the screen. It is a scroll view and it is working. This scroll view is going to have a maximum height of infinity. And we can see it here. I'm going to put a background on the scroll view. I don't like that as the default state. I'm not really sure why it's doing that. I don't know why it is expanding as big as possible. Ah, it must be the lazy H stack. For some reason, the default is to do a maximum height. So what we're going to do is basically just give this. We know these cells are an exact height of 75 by 75. So let's just give the scroll view here a frame with a height of 100, which should be more than enough to encompass these cells. Awesome. The last thing I want to do is adjust the padding on this. So I could put the padding on the V stack here. So I could add here padding of dot leading of maybe 16. But the problem is that the scroll view is now not going through the edge of the device. I want that scroll view to push through the edge of the device. So I'm going to add the padding actually inside the scroll view so that we're not moving the scroll view frame. We're just moving the content in the scroll view. Let's make it horizontal. And then let's also add the padding onto the title as well. So it lines up beautiful. Now it scrolls all the way through the scroll view. Let's do the scroll indicators, scroll, scroll indicators hidden and remove the blue. And just like that, we have our match queue section, which looks really good. I'm going to highlight all of this and cut it, let's move it down here and say private var match. Q section, some view, paste that in, match Q section, and we got one more section to go, guys, and we're going to wrap this up. Last section is obviously going to be all of our, our chats section, our current chats. So it's all this data down here. So firstly, let's get this little header going here. You'll notice that the, the title here is not included in the scroll view of this. So let's get this header going first. I'm going to come down and actually copy the match queue section and then just let's paste it up here for a second paste it here why not cool this next one is going to say chats and this section will say recent so similar design there this scroll view is going to be a vertical this is going to be a lazy v stack we don't want the set height for each of these starting to look better already. Uh, we do notice that here there's an icon, a little filter icon. So let's just take our group here, this group, put it in an H stack, open the brackets. Let's add here spacing of zero. And on the right side of this H stack, we're going to add an image with a system name of maybe line horizontal dot three dot decrease. Let's add a spacer in here with a minimum length of zero. Let's give this a font of title two. So it's a little bit bigger over here. So lastly, we don't want the profile image cell. We actually want the Bumble chat preview cell. Let's option click. Let's triple click control M. And then here we're going to go user.image. Let's bring up our random double. Let's bring up our random Boolean. The username will be user.firstName. Last chat message, let's just go the user dot about me for now. And is your move, let's do bool.random as well. Let's cut and paste this here. And our screen is really coming together. Has new message is on some of the cells. The your move is on some of these cells. I actually don't like these cat images. I, I should have picked a different API, uh, but let's actually call the user dot images dot random, random elements. And force unwrap it. We know there is images in here. And I think these images just look a little bit nicer. So we'll, we'll copy that. 
I'm going to do it for the other cells as well. So down here, this is just working with mock data. That's not relevant to a real application. And let's wrap this up with just like a little bit of styling here. So on this, let's see, we already have, let's make this vertical as well. So it's just fully off from the chats and let's wrap this up by just cutting this section as well. And we'll come down here and we'll call this a private variable called recent chats section of type some view, paste that in. Recent chat section is going to go right below the queue. We don't need this spacer anymore. Just like that, we have our screen and I think it looks really good. That's all the code we're going to do. I'm going to wrap up this video by just adding a little bit of routing between the last screen and this screen. Let's jump into our content view. First and foremost, again, we're going to be using Swiftful routing. I went over this earlier in the series. If you are just joining, you can import Swiftful routing or you can just write your own routing code. If you're using Swiftful routing, we already wrapped our app in a router view. And then in the content view, we're just going to add a button here that says open Bumble. And we'll go to the Bumble home view. Hopefully that works. Beautiful. I'm going to, I'm going to add some logic here. If I click this arrow, let's go back to the content view. If I click this, if I click the filter on the right side, we're going to go forward to the chats. This is not the actual chats button, but we're not going to build the tab bar. So I think it's going to be close enough. So let's jump into the Bumble home view real quick. Let's look at that back arrow. Let's actually get the, on the top of the screen, the at environment router var router. Let's import Swiftful routing. And let's go to those buttons in the header here. So the tap gesture, let's just call router not dismiss screen. I'm just going to put it on both of the buttons on the left side. And then on the right side, we're going to have a router dot show screen. We're going to push. So navigation link to the bumble. What are we doing? The bumble chats view. Let's wrap our preview in a router. So we're just going to go here and add a router view. And if I push forward, it should go to the next screen. If I tap on these three dots here, I want to go back. So let's take our environment router. Let's go to our Bumble chats view, let's paste in our environment here. And then in the header, let's jump to the definition and we're just going to add, if you tap on the three lines, we'll add it on tap gesture router dot dismiss the screen, build and run this to a simulator. Let's see what we have built. Open up Bumble. We got Bumble going. We got the filters working here. We got the user profile that we can swipe on. We can scroll up as well. We got profile images loading in. We can press these buttons to also go yes or no. We got the super like here. It's not doing anything, but we built the nice little UI there. And if we click the filter, we're going to go to the chat screen, which looks pretty cool. I am noticing that as I like click to this screen, the UI kind of jumps around a little bit. And that's just because in our mock data, we added a bunch of like random doubles, random booleans. And so every time that this re-renders, it's going to give us a different value. So that's why you see like some of this jump when I just jump to the screen really quickly. If I just gave this static values, it wouldn't jump, but we didn't build out a data model that actually supports our chat. So in like a real Bumble app, you're not going to be looping on users for these cells, like these cells, you loop on chats. So a chat would have maybe two users, uh, all the chat messages, as well as Booleans for the progress and the is your move and things like that. But I don't want to take time to just make that data model just to ignore the, this little tiny jump. So we're just going to ignore that for now, leave it as is. I think this looks good for learning purposes. We have now covered basically all these drag gestures, swiping, how to do that. We dealt a lot with scroll views, how to make sure our scroll views are going through the edges of the device and different kind of layouts here. We got a vertical scroll view as well as a horizontal one. I do think there needs to be a little bit more spacing here. So I'm just going to add some quick, maybe spacing. Let's go padding of maybe vertical here. I think that will look a little bit nicer. And yeah, so again, we've now built Spotify. And we have built now Bumble, which are both really cool apps. 
I'm sure the code in the apps is much different than the code that we built. I don't know if these are, either of these are built in Swift UI. They probably are not, uh, but we have built pretty good looking versions of them. Uh, I would say relatively quickly and honestly with not that complex code. There's definitely some, some really good code here. I again, want to stress that when we were building these screens, we built them strategically. So it doesn't matter what architecture we end up using for our app. We made all of our cells reusable. So anytime we created some sort of reusable component, and we made a lot of reusable components in this section of the course, all of these just have like strings and booleans and simple data types. None of these reusable components are coupled to anything. There is no dependencies. There is no managers. There is no data services. These are just dumb little cells that we then put and implement in our core screens on our view. And so if we wanted to take our view and we look at it at a high level, it's basically just a bunch of reusable components and then a bunch of pieces of data. And if we wanted to change this maybe to MVVM or TCA, all we need to do is basically extract all of this data to some other layer in my app. I can put it in a view model, I can move it in a presenter or something like that. Again, I'm really just trying to stress here a bunch of different ways to build these apps. And I think that swiping and dealing with a lot of this drag logic is normally pretty difficult, but now we have mastered it. And I hope you feel a little bit more confident in building these apps on your own. Thank you for watching. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.